Today on America's Test Kitchen, we travel to Paris to learn how to make the best baguette right at home. And in the equipment corner, Adam uncovers the essential tools for baking baguette. That's all right here on America's Test Kitchen. So here's the question. Are Parisian baguettes so much better than what you can get here? It would be worth the time and trouble to make them at home in your own kitchen. Well, to answer that question, we sent one of our test cooks, Andrew, over to Paris for a few days undercover to interview people about making those baguettes. He went to Au Paradis du Gourmand, lots of other famous bakeries. He took photographs, he brought back notes, and we spent eight weeks here in the test kitchen making hundreds of baguettes. So let's go into the test kitchen with Bridget and figure out how to crack the code on the Parisian baguette. It's so good, you're gonna to wanna to make it at home in your own kitchen. You know, sometimes I think we live among a nation of faux, that everything looks like one thing, but it's really something else. What this are you is to say? a, you're all real, <laughs> every root. The problem with this is it looks like a baguette, but you know, it clearly isn't Holy a baguette. Moly. Look, I mean, this is like, it's just white bread in the shape of a baguette. I mean, if you were to throw this, I mean, if we were to throw this like this, like this, it wouldn't really bang. No. No, so forget it. Goodbye. All right. I'm angry. Let's get serious. Well, we want a substantial baguette to make at home, and that's the problem with baguettes. There's so much mystery and some intimidation with making baguettes. We want a really nice, crisp crust, one that's not too tough, too thick, and not too soggy But as we, well. we do need to say, this is a project. Right? It's not going to be done in an hour. No. You have to love baking to do it. That's right. And we think it's worth the time, and it's fun. Okay. And you have to love bread. You have to love which bread. Which we do. That's okay. right. So back to the baguette. I mentioned the crust and also the crumb inside the interior. It shouldn't look like white sandwich bread. It should have some small holes, some large holes. And then finally, it's got to have flavor. It actually has to taste like something. So we were influenced by authentic French baguettes. We're going to take some of those techniques that we learned along the way from the bakeries and bring them all home. First of all, I've got 15 ounces of all-purpose flour. And this is three cups, roughly. But I like to weigh things out when I'm baking. It's more exact. This is a teaspoon of instant, or you can use rapid rise yeast. We have one and a half teaspoons of regular table salt. Now, the deal with an authentic French baguette, the French flour actually has its own specific flavor. It's a little bit weedier, has a little bit more flavor to it. And what we thought we would do is use some whole wheat flour. Now, whole wheat flour has the bran, it has the germ. It's that germ that has that really good, sweet, weedy flavor but the bran was found too bitter. Plus the bran, it actually, it's little shards of bran in there. It sliced through the gluten or the protein strands as the bread was becoming developed. So we ended up with a really squat loaf. So we're gonna sift the flour. This is one and two thirds ounces of whole wheat flour. Give it a good sift. All right, Chris, and what you see, this is left behind. It's the little shards of wheat mm. bran. All right, last flavor ingredient. This is diastatic malt powder. This is a teaspoon. And this is basically barley that's been fermented and turned into sugar. So it has a really good flavor to it. It's also gonna help with coloring. Now we can go ahead and load this onto our standing mixer. There we go. Fit it with the dough hook. Okay, and now I'll turn this to low and I'm going to add one and a half cups of water. Now we're looking for a dough that is still moist. We don't want it to be too dry, but not one that is going to be so wet that it doesn't hold its shape. All right, the dough looks great. Let's take it out of there. And I'm gonna transfer this dough to a bowl. We've gone ahead and oiled it. This little vegetable cooking spray will work. And now we'll cover this with plastic. Nice and tight. All right, so this is going to sit here under wraps for 30 minutes, and this is a recurring theme throughout this recipe. Every time we handle the dough, we want to let it rest, let the gluten relax, but it also is going to start to form that network of bubbles that we're looking for. Well, speaking of waiting, we have a little bit of time, so we'll join Adam in the equipment corner, who's done a roundup of baguette making equipment. If you are going to take the plunge and make your own baguettes at home, there's a few pieces of specialized equipment, not too expensive. It'll make that process much, much easier. Adam has been testing. You're here to tell us about your results. Okay, there are three things that we found you need, Chris. The first is a piece of linen cloth called a baker's couche. And you use that to let the shaped loaves proof. 
You line it with a little bit of flour. What the flour does is absorbs moisture and forms a little skin on the outside of the loaf. And that's what bakes up into that gorgeous crackling crisp crust on a great baguette. We have three of them. They're right in front of you and one set of linen tea towels just to see whether you really needed a real couche or if you could get away with tea towels. We learned a couple of things. Number one, you don't want too much flour on the couche because it can cause the baguette to bake up a little blotchy on the crust. This couche has a tighter weave than those two and it held just the right amount of flour. Those held on to a little bit too much flour and the baguettes baked up blotchy. We also had too much flour on those linen tea towels, mostly because they were white. We just made a poor color choice. So if you're going to use those, make sure you get a different color where you can see how much flour is on there. But this professional one worked better. It did work yeah. a little better, okay. definitely. The last thing is size. Our baguette recipe is scaled towards a home oven and a baking stone. Most of the ones that they use in professional kitchens are 24 inches long. We liked one that was 18 inches long. So this is our winning couche. It's the San Francisco Baking Institute couche. It was just eight bucks and it will help you with that crust. Now we have to get the formed loaf off of the couche into the oven. For that, you need a transfer board. These are just narrow pieces of wood that are beveled at one side. You can roll the loaf right onto it. Really not a lot of difference here. We had good luck with all of them. This one is $12. This one is $15. Again, to see whether we really needed one, we put together our own with two pieces of cardboard taped together, 16 inches long, four inches wide. Worked perfectly. It was just fine. Now, another telltale sign of a great baguette are these openings here. Those are called ears, and they give you a little flavor, they give you a little texture, a little crunch at the edge. And the way you get that is by making a curved slash in the loaf just before it goes into the oven. And to make that curved slash, you need something called a bread lom. We have four bread loms here, and again, we were interested in substitution, so I have a short serrated knife for tomatoes. I also have a box cutter. And we actually found that Bread lom does work better than either of the substitutions because you can go more smoothly through the dough and you get a cleaner cut. You can either have a straight blade lom or a curved blade lom. The cuts have to be curved, so we had better luck with the curved blades and we stuck to those. We have four of them here. This one we didn't love because you really can't replace the blade. This one we didn't love because the blade was a little difficult to replace. It felt dicey. This one worked really well, but this section here that holds the blade in place caught on the dough and it meant that the lom didn't travel through the dough that smoothly. So this is our winning lom here. This one is by Breadtopia. It's $9.50. It's got a great handle. It's easy to control. You can replace the blades easily. It comes with 10 blades and it's perfect for the job. So we have three winners, two of them from the San Francisco Baking Institute, an 18-inch couche. We also have the transfer board. And finally, we have from Breadtopia the knife for cutting the top of the baguettes before they go into the oven. Okay, Chris, 30 minutes is up. The dough is relaxed. Yeah, I don't feel too bad myself. So now we want to start working in some air bubbles into the dough itself. I'm going to use a folding technique, very easy. I'll take a little bit of the dough and just bring it right into the center and then turn the bowl about 45 degrees and continue to do this. It's eight total folds all the way around. Every time that we work this dough a little bit, we're incorporating more air and also getting that uneven bit of larger and smaller holes. All right, so guess what I'm gonna say? Wait. That's right, wait, Chris. Another 30 minutes, and then I'm going to come back and do the same thing. Four turns in total, three more. I'll come back, turn it eight times each time with 30 minutes in between. Okay. So I'll meet you back here on the final and the fourth turn. Okay, Chris, last turn. I did two more while you were away. So again, around the bowl eight times, and you can see the dough's getting a little bit more puffy, and you can start to see some of these big bubbles in there. That's exactly what we want. All right, so this time I am gonna go ahead and put the plastic back on. And instead of letting this sit on the counter for another 30 minutes, this is going to go into the refrigerator. We're gonna let this rest for at least 24 hours or up to 72 hours. And that's going to give this some slow fermentation and it'll develop a lot of flavor compounds. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this to the fridge. You know, there are a lot of recipes for bread that let the dough sit in the fridge for 24 hours even more. And the reason is there's a lot of flavor development going on while you're doing something else. 
There's a bunch of things going on. First of all, starches convert to sugars. There are long chains of glucose in the starch that became smaller chains of glucose in the sugars, and you can actually taste them that way. Secondly, you get acetic acid being developed, much like in vinegar. The third thing is, this is kind of interesting, something called aldehydes are created. Now, if you've ever had a Twinkie, you've had aldehydes. There's a specific one called diacetyl, which is buttery and yeasty. It's also used in commercial popcorn. Then, of course, there's a boozy flavor, that's ethanol. Then there's a floral flavor in bread, the acetic acid and the ethanol combined for that. And finally, when you pop that baguette in the oven, you get the Maillard reaction. Amino acids and sugars create lots of flavor compounds. Now, this works great for two or three days, but after four days, there's no more food for the yeast, and you get no more flavor development. All right, Chris, this is right out of the fridge, and you can see it's much lighter. Now we need to divide the dough. I want to sprinkle my bench with some flour here because we're going to take this out of the bowl. This amount of dough makes four baguettes. We'll make two today. There we go. Get a little bit of flour on my hands. And now I want to press this into an eight inch square. I'm not really trying to work too much of the bubbles out, so I'm not pressing too hard. Let's go ahead and divide this in half. And I'll go ahead and return this piece of dough back here. If you could put the plastic back on, we will use that another day. This second half gets divided again into two pieces. All right, now we want to move these over to a rimmed baking sheet. I'm going to line it with a little parchment paper here to prevent it from sticking directly to the sheet pan. And we'll give it a good dusting of flour as well. All right. One, two. I can count. So these don't have to be shaped or anything right now? Just, Not right just now. Just blobs of dough on the parchment paper. That's right. Okay. And that's because we don't want to handle them again. So we handled them once. We don't want to start shaping them because they can start to snap back. And now we wait another 45 minutes, let the dough relax, and then we'll move on. All right. So now we're going to start shaping them. This step is short and sweet, but it's going to start forming that baguette shape. We're going to roll this onto itself just loosely. We don't want to start working out any of those bubbles into about a three or four inch long cylinder. We'll do the same thing with the second one here. All right, there we go. And now this goes right back on. Cover with plastic again, if you could cover that other one. And now we wait another 30 minutes, but I promise after that we will start to shape the bag. The train's going to leave the station soon? That's right. I hope so. Chris, you've waited long enough. Well, I have, that's true. Almost long enough. There's still a few more steps to shaping our baguette, but the dough has rested, and now we can start turning them into that classic baguette shape. So what we have here is a baker's couche. Now this is a heavy-duty piece of linen, and we're going to use it to cradle the baguettes after we've shaped and formed them. The linen actually will wick away some of the moisture from the outside of the baguette, and we'll get a really nice, crisp crust. But this works so well at wicking away moisture, it made the crust a little too dry. So we'll give it a nice light misting of water. And I want to place an inverted baking sheet right under the center. All right, and now I can use some flour and really work it into the linen. And the more that you use this, the less flour that you have to work into it. Go ahead and flour the bench, just lightly in the front because this is where I'm going to be working. But I do want to load this in the back a little bit more. 